If you are physically able, I want you to rise and stand to your feet as we get, again, reverence the reading of the Word of God on this morning. I hope you're ready for a large portion of God's Word this morning. That doesn't mean I'm going to be long. That just means that I want you to be attentive to Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody here ready for the Word? Yes, Anybody here had a tough, kind of a tough week last week? Yes. You had to deal with some things and yes. pay a few bills and when you looked at your budget, things didn't look. I wish I had somebody. It wasn't all that you wanted it to be. So you, you just need a word of encouragement on this morning. Exactly. Lord, ask that you flank me with your prayers. Deuteronomy chapter number one. I want to thank Brother uh, Brooks for the beautiful way he read this. I'm just doing so for emphasis' sake. Again, thank Brother Amari for the wonderful way he led our city uh, on this morning. I'm reading from the New American Standard Translation. If you need a blessing this morning, say, Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. For your servant is listening. All right, let's see what the book says. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse number 8 says, See, I have placed the land before you. Go in. Everybody shout, Go in. Go in. One more time, shout, Go in. Go in. Right. Then the text says, and possess the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to them and their descendants after them. Scroll down to verse number 26. I want to pick that one up as well while he's still standing. It says, yet you were not willing to go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. Is that in your Bible? Yes. I want you to look at a neighbor and smile like you like them. If you don't like that one, just look at the other one. And you'll we'll just pray for you. But open up your mouth and smile and people be asking and say, Neighbor! Neighbor! Oh, neighbor! Oh, neighbor! Oh, neighbor. Oh, blessing! Oh, blessing! On the way! On the way! You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Your blessing is on the way. Pray for me as I highlight this sermonic flight that God would allow us to cruise at an exegetical and contextual altitude yes. Yes. and safely descend into making sermonic applications before I land the soul plane. Amen. Soul plane. <laughs> that just means pray for me so I can preach good. <laughs> if you needed a sermonic title, lean on your neighbor and give them the sermon title. Neighbor! Neighbor! I'm going in. I'm going in. <laughs> The first area of sermonic focus that I want to focus on this morning is the promise. God made a covenant with the patriarch, Abraham, that he would multiply Abraham's seed and his descendants would outnumber the stars of the sky. And in Genesis chapter 22, verse 17 and 18, he said, In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And the Lord promised to give the Abraham's descendants a land. You know that land. It's called the promised land according to Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 8. It said it's going to be a spacious land. A land that's flowing with milk and honey. And honey. Amen somebody. Yeah. But the problem and the tension that we find in the text occurs because the people of God did not want to get what the Lord had already had for them. Can you imagine? The Lord is saying, I have a place for you to go. It's going to be a better place than slavery. It's going to be a better place than Egypt. And all I need you to do is go in. Amen, somebody. But they refused to go. And they doubted and were afraid, skeptical, and lacked the formality of giving God the trust that he truly had demonstrated that he should have with his own people. So in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses takes on the tumultuous uh, task of trying to teach and reteach and train and give tutelage to some to 
tumultuous people who were really rebelling against God and wanted to take a detour from their destiny. Can I tell you something quick with church? Make sure you understand this PowerPoint real quick. Just if you ever have a faith test in your life, don't allow a faith test to deter you into taking a detour from your destiny. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Somebody, a faith test can sometimes deter you, and deter you rather, from your destiny if you allow it to. So what Moses has to do is recant and recall and try to recalibrate the mind and the rationale of God's people to get them to see that God will take care of everything for you. I wish I had two or three witnesses in here on this morning that have been blessed by God before. And you couldn't see it, you couldn't think about it, you didn't know how God was going to do it, but God allowed something to show up right on time. Anybody here that has some old time money, some old time blessing, some old time people coming to your life and nurse you and help you and bless you in your life and Moses is trying to do that with the people of God and instruct the people of God what they should do, what the word of God says when you read the book of Deuteronomy, but the people of God were certainly rebellious. So Moses is rewinding and pressing play. He's reviewing everything that the Lord had uh, brought them through and taught them all their lives. <clears throat> And he wants them to understand some things that they had done wrong. So the book of Deuteronomy is an awesome book, but I want to set you up geographically uh, in the context here. After God had miraculously delivered his people from Egypt, the people of God were wandering in the wilderness. They were wandering in the wilderness. And the Bible teaches us in Deuteronomy chapter number 1, and verse number 6, that God told Moses to tell the people, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. Ooh, we, that was worth coming to church for somebody right there. You have stayed at a mountain, Lord have mercy, long enough. The problem was that it took them 40 years and they were going nowhere. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter number one that from Horeb, Mount Sinai, to Kadesh Barnea, which was the borders for the people of God before they were beginning to take over the, the promised land with their enemies, it was only an 11 day journey that had taken them 40 years. Okay, rewind. All the rest play with the Let me say that again. They have been traveling 40 years to try to accomplish something that only should have taken 11 days. Which is a powerful principle that is pregnant with pertinent information to this preaching point. Here it is. Make sure that it does not take you that long to do something that you can get done in 11 days. Preach, boy. not on our side. Uh, you ought to be like Alicia Keys and Drake. Whatever you're going to do, you should do it right now. Amen, somebody. So I need you to understand why understanding is simply available that they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years when they could have got to the land, could have got to the place that only should have taken them 11 days. And it's so sad. So when you look at Deuteronomy chapter 1, what Moses is doing is repeating the history of the Israelites to them in hopes that they will understand the mistakes that they have made in the past so that they will move forward with the agenda that God had given them. And it's so sad because he told them that I'm going to give you this land. But they were afraid and scared. He promised them that he would give it to them. Just notice your Bible. Notice uh, verse number 21 of Deuteronomy chapter number 1. Verse number 21, this will bless your life uh, if you apply it to your life for the rest of your life. Here it is. He says again, see, the Lord your God has placed the land before you. Go up, take possession as the Lord, the God of our fathers, has spoken to you. Do not fear do not be dismayed. Is that your Bible? Can I tell you that when they finally took a turn, 
to go in a different direction, the Bible said that they finally got to Kadesh Barnea, the border, before they were able to go into the promised land and defeat their enemies. So the, before they went over, the people said, before we go over, let's send some spies to spy out the land. My question is, if God has already given it to you, why in the world do you need to get some spies binoculars to go over there and see what's over there and who is all over there because it's already yours. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's already yours. Go ahead. You better be careful, beloved. With all the love of my heart that I can uh, express this statement and this sermonic presentation to you, be careful sending the wrong people to spy out what God has already said is for you. Because when God says, I promise to give you anything, you don't have to worry about your enemies, your frenemies, wish I had a witness, those who just desire to slander your name, lie on you, bring shame to your life, because what they try to do can't stop God. that the majority of the spies that he, they sent out overestimated the enemy and underestimated their God. More than that, more than that right now. They overestimated their enemy and underestimated their God. And, and, and that's a powerful principle that we need to be careful to make sure we understand. Before you send somebody out, to check out something that you already believe God has for you, be careful who you send. You may send out somebody and God has told you, you believe that God is trying to get you to, to start a business. But if you send out the wrong person, they'll tell you it costs too much, y'all won't help me. You can't do it, it's not going to work out. Be careful who you send out to spy out for the job application, to spy out to check out the school, to check out the car, to check out the property, amen, somebody. Be careful who you send out to hook you up with somebody that you want, single people. They'll tell you, oh, they already see somebody. You go to the mall on Saturday, you see that person with them. which is geographically Kadesh Barnea, they stalled and sent out spies. And you know the story by I mean, There's only two of the spies came back and gave a favorable report. And ten of them said they're just too big. They're giants over there. We saw some good fruit, but we're not going to be able to go and take over those people's land. They're just too large. They're just too big. And they came back, and the people of God, their hearts melted because of the report that they received back when they never should have even had that report go out. All they had to do, come on and get a certain title, just go in, amen, somebody. And some of us have some things that God has already purposed us to be able to do because we refuse to go in. Some of y'all been starting the business for 30 and 40 years, but you refuse to go in. Some of y'all been about to find somebody to marry for 10 and 50 y'all won't hit me in here. 40 years, but you won't talk to the person, amen, somebody. Somebody knows they need to go to the doctor and get checked out, but they just won't go in. I'm not fixing to anybody in here. So what we gotta make sure we understand whatever God has for us, nobody, no devil in hell can stop God from giving you whatever it is that God said belongs to you. And somebody in here needed to hear that. Because the devil will put so many roadblocks and snares before you when you're trying to accomplish something in your life. And sometimes your task seems insurmountable. You just feel like there's too many negative roadblocks in front of you. But sometimes the majority is wrong and the minority is right. Because Brother Travis, only two of them came back and said, let's go. Strap up. Let's get it. It's going down. I don't know about you, but it's time to go in. And I know what God got for us. Joshua said, let's go. Caleb, Caleb said, let's do it. Other team said, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. <laughs> Who are you to tell me? Who believes in God that has promised me that I cannot get what he says I already have? Make sure we understand is the principle is 
don't never let nobody tell you that you can't get something that you believe that your God can help you to get. So that was the promise, the promised land. The second sermonic area that I want to focus on is the provocation. Everybody shout provocation. Provocation. Provocation will really tear up the spirit because the word provocation simply means the act of provoking someone to anger. Which tells us something about the mind of God when God says, I'm going to promise to give you this. And while I'm on that, let me just remind you. Sometimes the promises that God gives us is not because of anything we've done. He's, he's already promised us because he promised our ancestors and our forefathers. See, these people inherited a promise that God had made hundreds of years before to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Amen, somebody. So these people were the recipients of a promise to which they had not earned or merited. God said, I'm just going to give it to you. So you got to make sure you understand that these people provoked God to anger when they said we can't go. So anytime God puts on your heart through God's word and through the Holy Spirit that there's something that he wants you to do and you say, God, I can't do it. Guess what it does to God's spirit? It provokes him to anger. You gotta make sure you understand that if you don't believe me, drop down to verse number 26, same chapter, beloved. Brothers and sisters, watch this. Verse number 26 says, Yet you were not willing to go up, and but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. Let's keep reading. Verse number 27. And you grumbled in your tents and said, Because the Lord hates us, He has brought us out. Uh, of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites and destroy us. Where can we go up, my brethren? It made our hearts melt, saying the people are bigger and taller than we are. Uh, the cities are large and fortified to heaven. And besides, we saw the sons of Anakin there. Then I said to you, Moses is talking to the people of God. He said, Then I said to you, Do not be shocked, nor fear thee. The Lord your God who goes before you yeah. will himself fight on your behalf. Yeah. Just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Yeah. Maybe there are two or three of you in here that are Bible readers, but you need to be reminded of what Moses is telling the people. Yeah. Sometimes we have so much amnesia. Oh, we go to God doubting God for something that we know that we need, but we don't go to him with the right kind of faith because we forget all those times in the past that the Lord has pulled us up out of the fire. I wish I had two people that would get the deliver before the Lord. Like, and you can remember and recall that you woke up one morning and could not even remember how you got home last night. There were some times in your life you didn't know how you were going to pay your bill, how you were going to make it through, how you want to get through the tragedy, get over the grief, amen, somebody, for the Lord gave you strength. But we forget all the time that God has allowed blood to run warm in your veins. How your heart has been beating for 30 and 40 and 50 and come on in here, old people, 70 and 80, amen, somebody. And all these years, they have never stood to be. And if God has the power to do all that, whatever he has promised us, we have to have enough faith to believe that we can go in and get it. Amen, somebody. I don't know about you, uh, Newberg. I, I, I can recall when they were in the wilderness. The Bible teaches us they had been there for 400 years. The people of God were enslaved by Pharaoh in the city of Egypt. Amen, somebody. And they had all of this harsh kind of treatment and taskmasters and built all those pyramids and did all of that kind of stuff. But then God came in and sent ten plagues to Pharaoh. He said, now you're going to let go of my people. And let me just say something. You can, instead of cursing out the people who are your enemies, Instead of P-R-E-Y praying for them, instead of P-R-A-Y praying for them, you want to just say, God get them for God can punish somebody with well more than what you can. He can somebody. That's why retribution and payment belongs to God. And you want to pray that God blesses them instead of doing something negative to them because when we look a few years ago, 
ago, we were doing the same thing they are. Right. Am I right about it? See, we want grace when we need it and when our loved ones need it, but we want justice for everybody else. No, 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 no. Let me get names and name it. You don't want justice. Go ahead. Okay, here it is. Uh, beloved, justice is what we all deserve. See, you want grace when you want it. But if you need grace, you ought to be willing to give grace to somebody else when they need it. Because you don't want justice because if you got what you deserve, you've been there a long time ago. Yeah, I met somebody, but aren't you happy? I said, but aren't you happy? And God kept you when he should have killed you. He blessed you when he should have let you go a long time ago. And for that, you want to appreciate the grace of God and be willing to extend that grace to somebody else who needs the truth, Brother Jones. So you need to understand that these people complain that they murmured about God blessing them, but they forgot God is the same God that helped them get uh, through the Red Sea. When the enemies of God were coming after them after they had escaped Egypt, the Bible says they came to the Red Sea. They didn't have nowhere else to go. Their back were against the wall. And the Bible says that Mo, he, he allowed Moses to part. Come on in here, Bible. He to part the Red Sea. And the waters were walled up on the left side, circulating. And the waters were walled up on the right side, circulating. And just in case, they brought some spoil from Egypt. And there were two or three people who had on some Louis Vuitton loafers and some Gucci sandals. The Bible teaches us they were able to walk through that Red Sea on, on dry land. Amen, somebody. Because when God gets ready to fix your situation, he knows what to do. Amen, somebody. They forgot all the time that they were hungry and Manna came down from heaven. Amen, somebody. You see some quail so they can have some meat to eat. All the time when they were in the desert and they needed water, all Moses had to do was strike the rock and speak to the rock. Amen, somebody. And water came up out of a rock. And some of you can testify that you've been in some places in your life where you feel like you was at rock bottom. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody can recall you feel like you was at rock bottom? Yes, but I tell you that at the bottom, you don't know if there's a rock at the bottom. Amen, somebody. And that rock is Jesus. Amen, somebody. And he will help you and bless you and deliver you with whatever it is that you need in your life. So I need you to recall some of the times in your life just like the people of God. But God blessed his people to come out some crazy circumstances. He was a fire by night and a cloud by day. God was a supernatural GPS back in the Old Testament. Amen, somebody. How God has blessed the people of God but right when they were getting ready to go over the water from Kadesh Barnea to take over that land, they doubted God. Yeah. And before we look at them, some of us need to be reminded yeah. that we too can have roller coaster faith. Yeah. <laughs> on Sunday, we alright? Yeah. Get a bad call on Monday, we're back there. Come on, yeah. Yeah. You need some help too. So we gotta understand that we have to strengthen our faith because we won't be able to get the blessings that God has for us if we don't have the faith in God and remember what God has done for us even in the past. Brief, Brother Jones. So you gotta make sure you understand that some of you in here today may be in a wilderness situation. What do you mean, Brother Jones? I mean, maybe there's one or two people in here that feels like your life, and you may not admit this to nobody else, but you may feel like your life is going in circles. You, you, you feel like you're doing the same thing over. You're having the same experiences. You're trying to kill something, but won't let them die in your life. You're just going through the same monotony of life. You're in a complacent situation. Amen, somebody. You need to understand, sometimes God won't move you beyond where you are to get you to learn the lesson. Look at your neighbor and say, God, you learn the lesson. Amen. You know how it is. Some, some of your parents killed your kid back because you felt like in the second grade, they didn't learn the lesson. Am I talking to anybody in here? And some of you have not gotten the promotion yet because you had learned the lesson. And you keep letting the same people on Monday at your job get you down, change your attitude, change your countenance or your facial expression. God will allow you to stay in that same place until you learn. The lesson they missed somebody. The people of God were born in circles because they had not learned the lesson. And the lesson 
lesson took them 40 years. What I was so terrible about that? God was so frustrated with the same people that he had never allowed their clothes to get torn and worn out and their shoes and all that stuff for 40 years and miraculously fed them with bread from heaven, water to come out of rock, part of the Red Sea, amen somebody, and did all of that and they had the uneducated God, the chitlins and the guts <laughs> to doubt God after all that. And when, and when I preach this and when I teach this and when I study this for myself, I'm looking at me. Right. Yeah. Because what we do in the church is we can, we, we can hear preaching and we can think about all the people that it applies to except for us. Before you can teach it to somebody else, you need to have a good handle on it yourself. Somebody. So we see that they were so close to getting their blessing, but they allowed someone to talk them out of their blessing and they had unwillingness to go. Amen. Louisville is so impactful. We could do so much in the city of Louisville. Did I say that right? There's so much that could be done and would be done and needs to be done we can't get complacent and stay at the same spiritual mountain. Amen. I wait on amen now. Amen, somebody. We have to go in. Everybody shout, go in. We got to go in some places that we never been before. We got to talk to some people that we never talked before. We got to do some things that we never done before. Because we can't stay at the same mountain. And when I walk into this building, I'm, I'm so impressed by the history of this church. You know, when you, when you walk down the hallway, you got to go down the hallway every now and then, you see the names on the doors of families who gave money. And can I tell you something? And I'm going to just take a detour, but I'm coming back to the text. The, the, the old church 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, had less money, less education, less buildings, and did more with less than we're doing with more today. And, 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 and when I when I hear stories about families that contribute to New Bern and how that building came up and this building came up and this elder who's gone on to be with the Lord did this and this elder who's gone on with the Lord and done that and this preacher came and did this and I'm the brother Baker, this happened, I'm the brother Clinton, this happened, I'm the brother whoever, this happened and all these great things happened and there were some people that are members of this church that never got a chance to see what God is doing today. So 
much for us. Third focus, and I'm done. The third area of sermonic focus is the promotion. Everybody shout the promotion. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse number 35. Let's look at verse number 34. Then the Lord heard the sound of your words, Moses said, and he was angry and took an oath, saying, verse 35, not one of these men, is that in your Bible? Not one of these men, the these there is a full pronoun referring to the disobedient men of war that were afraid to go get what God said already belonged to them. He said, not one of these men, this evil generation, Lord have mercy, shall see the good land which I swore to give to their fathers. And he goes on to talk about Joshua and Caleb. They met somebody. Let me tell you what happened. They tried to wise, the people of God tried to wise up. They said, let's, let, let's go and fight now. We, we, we see that God is angry with us. So let's go and fight now. But God said, oh, oh you can't go now because I ain't going to be good. <laughs> oh, God is risen. Oh, so now you want to go. So you know you're going to die in this wilderness because you know you haven't been obedient. Amen, somebody. God said, if you go fight that war now, I'm not going to be with you, and you're going to get killed. <laughs> so during those 40 years, God allowed the enemy to kill those men of war who did not go and get the land that God had promised. So over a period of 40 years, all those men died in meaningless battles because they did not have the Lord on your side. On their side. Amen, somebody. And, and, and can I tell you that the battle is God's. God says, I will fight for you. I wish I had a witness. God, God, God says, all you have to do is show up. And I'll show up. God says, I know who your enemies are. Your enemies can't do nothing with God. God says, oh, how I wanted to carry you. Like a father carries an infant child on his shoulders, in his bosom. Amen, somebody. Oh, how I wanted to bless you. And some of you right now can testify that you are in a self-imposed wilderness. Where you have left hope because you have forgot how God has brought you out of the hospitals. Come on in here, somebody. Out of the doctor's visits. Amen, somebody. Out of the surgeries. Y'all not shouting good. Out of the bankruptcy. Amen, somebody. Brought you through the divorce. Brought you up out of the streets. Brought you from an addiction. Amen, somebody. Brought you out of an unemployment line. Because he is an awesome God. God says, I wanted to fight your battles for you and carry you, but you didn't believe in me when it counted. Wow. It's amazing that God has to fight so hard to do what he wants to do for us. Why are we making God have to work and fight just so he can bless us? And the many of you who are listening right now, oh, you want some blessings. You, you, you make it hard for God. We all make it hard for God when we doubt him. I'd rather just, I'd rather just jump in and say, you know what, I don't care what it looks like. Amen, somebody. I just got to put my trust, trust and faith in the Lord. God said, oh, how I wanted to fight with you. He wanted to give Israel a promotion but instead, they got a demotion from the place because of those people who did not have faith. And, and, and it makes me wonder how many demotions people are experiencing when God is intentionally giving out promotions through faith. Everybody shout faith. And it's, and it's believing in what you cannot see. But being fully convinced that what you believe in is going to happen. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. And so we got to make sure we understand why understanding is available. That these people missed 
an entrance into the promised land all because they died away from faith and having the quality of life that God wanted to give them. Amen, somebody. And so here's your application. We have to trust what God has promised to us in Scripture. Amen. 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 Okay, here he is, beloved. Brothers and sisters, yeah. all the love I can give you. We, we have to trust yeah. what God has promised to yeah. us in Scripture. Yeah. And what God has promised to us in Scripture will and has to happen. Are y'all excited about it? Yeah. Is, it is, is it our Bibles? Ain't it somebody? We have to focus on what God has said. And can I tell you, you can't get caught up on how things look sometimes. Because situations will look bad. Am I right about it? Loved ones will not look like they are healthy as they used to look. Amen, somebody. And, and we have to see how our bank accounts look from time to time. Wish I had a witness on this morning. But you can't always go on how things look. You have to have what I call blind faith. Because God has given us enough evidence that He can work things out on our behalf. Am I right about it? So I'm not going to worry how things look. I'm not going to worry on what the doctors say. I'm not going to worry about all the negativity. I'm going to keep my faith and trust in God. Yeah. Trust in the Lord yeah. with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Amen somebody. Amen. Bible says in Isaiah 54 verse number 17 no weapon that is falling against thee shall prosper. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor that's scripture. <laughs> we may may endure for a night with joy I ain't got nobody in here but joy. our earthly house. Oh, this tabernacle work is all. We have a building of God. A house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For thy sake we are healed all day long. Are accounted as sheep of the slaughter, and all these things we are more than conquerors. Amen, somebody. Through him that has loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love. Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm, 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 I'm so thankful for Scripture. And God wants to promote somebody today. But you got to make sure you have faith and not have that provocation and provoke God when God says there's a promise that I have for you. The Bible says in Acts 2, after Peter preached the first gospel sermon on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, the Bible says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift, everybody shall give, yeah. of the Holy Ghost, here it is, for the promise. Y'all yes, yes, better come on in here, for the promise, everybody shall promise. Are y'all excited about it? Yeah. Anybody here want to go one of these days? You want to live a long life, but one of these days you want to make heaven your home. Yeah. Where there be no more pain, yeah. no more sorrow, yeah. no more worry, yeah. no more dying, no more weight, no more cancer, no more disease, no high blood pressure. Amen, somebody. No more diabetes, no more doctors, no more lawyers, no more school. It'll be glory, glory, hallelujah to the land. Amen, somebody. I'm so glad you're about to show up. Amen, amen, amen. Anybody want to 
you will get a chance to see Brother Baker, Brother Hudson, all the disciples and the mothers and fathers of this church who go on to be with the Lord. You'll get a chance to spend eternity with them and tell them all you did while you were down here at the I can't wait to see my daddy, y'all. No. Judah. Judah is carrying the seed and Judah sleeps with the woman by the name of Tamar who was posing as a prostitute had twins by her. Pharaohs and Zerubbabel. Pharaohs was carrying the seed. So Pharaohs has a son by the name of Israel. Israel has a son by the name of Ram. Ram had a son by the name of Amenadab. Amenadab had a son by the name of Nation. Nation had a son by the name of Salmon. Salmon had a son by the name of Obed. Obed had a son by the name of Jesse. And Jesse was the king. And 28 generations later came for Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was the that was going to bless the whole earth. Ain't that somebody? Praise the mighty name of Jesus. And Jesus is the seed. Everybody shout seed. Jesus is the one who came to die for your sins. Ain't that somebody? So if you're here today, you're here today. The best news that you can get is good news. You've had a lot of bad news this past week, but you need some good news. The good news is that he loved us so much that he was willing to die for our sins. And 
if you don't get anything else, get the blood before you leave. I said, if you don't get anything else, get the blood before you leave. The promise is for you. Here's the promise. That if you believe with all your heart that Jesus home, bled and died, was buried and got up on the third day, if you believe that, that's the good news, that he loved you so much, he was willing to die for your sins. And if you're willing to repent of your sins, go in a different direction, change your attitude, change your actions, even as somebody, and be willing to live your life with Jesus because he loves you so much, that's good too. You have to confess Christ. It'll be the sweetest name on mortal tongue. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Even as somebody. And finally, be willing to be immersed, baptized in water for the forgiveness of all your sins. For the forgiveness of all your sins. For the forgiveness of all your lies. For the forgiveness of all your fornication. For the forgiveness of all your adultery. For the forgiveness of all your jealousy. For the forgiveness of all your envy. For the forgiveness of everything you've done in your life. Jesus wants to forgive somebody today. You came here unforgiven, you can leave forgiven all because of the blood of Jesus. I don't know about you, whatever it is on your heart today, we can pray for you. We want to pray for you. But there may be one soul here today that's away from the promise, away from the promotion. And you need to come. Why don't you get out of your seat? You come right now and you get in contact with the blood of Jesus. Amen, somebody. You want to get in contact with the blood of Jesus. Maybe today, God bless you, God bless you. Maybe today salvation has been a mountain for somebody in this place today. Who in here salvation has been a mountain for you? Can I tell you what the Bible says? You stay long enough. Amen, somebody. At this mountain. Don't be looking at them. They've already made that decision. Why don't you come? Even somebody. They've already made that decision to come and get whatever God has for them. If you're here today, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Maybe you're here today. Who am I talking to in this place? You may be a little boy, a little girl, a man or woman, leading your family as a man, going through some things, but at the same time, you know you stand in an undone condition, away from a relationship with Jesus. Amen, somebody. God bless you, sister. So if you are here today, listen to me, church. If you are here today, Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He's died for your sins. He stretched his arms. Why? To die for your sins. He was humiliated for your sins. He was crucified for your sins. Amen, somebody. What more do you want him to do? I said, what more do you want him to do? He's given his life. He's given his blood. All you have to do is come down here and get it. All you have to do is walk out of your seat right now and, and say, you know what? I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Who are you in this place? I'm encouraging you to come. Some of you have semen in your feet right now. You want to come, but you're just, you're playing double dutch you. Some of y'all are double dutch you right now. I, I should go, but nah, I ain't going to do it. Today may be the last sermon you ever hear. And death, death is all around us. But before you die, let us bury you in water for the forgiveness of all your sins. You got to die spiritually before you die physically. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stand and say, if you're here today, have enough courage, have enough strength to go in and come get what God has for you. Jesus is waiting right now while we stand together to say.